with two preteen daughters, 42 rabbits, three chicken, four tortoises and two dogs, British High Commissioner to Kenya, Rob Makea, and his lovely wife Alice definitely have their hands full after a long day at work. The family, which first came to Kenya in the summer of 2008, had previously lived in India and the U.S., where the ambassador served as a diplomat. Alice, who called the Kalahari days at home for the first six years of her life, was thrilled when her husband received his Kenyan posting. And although her first experience in the country was embarrassing, Alice would not let it hold her back. Um, I went to the Bush High Commission for the first time and, and before Robert had arrived. And I was absolutely desperate to try and make a good impression. And I tripped over the doorstep. That was my first impression of arriving in Kenya. He <laughs> <laughs> tripped. <laughs> That must have been very embarrassing. It was. I hope no one saw, but it is a glass-fronted building. <laughs> <laughs> Makia and their spotty daughters Nell and Molly soon followed, and they too fell in love with Kenya. They have so far gone camping in Lake Magadi, visited the Lake Nakuru National Park, Mombasa, and even Turkana. Makia, who will this year mark its 45th birthday, says he intends to go up north before his term in the Kenyan office comes to an end. I mean, for me, I'd say one of the most beautiful places um, uh, in the country are, are those hills up in up in Laikipia. I think there's some mm. amazing places there. Um, but there are so many different beautiful yeah. places. I mean, down by Lake Magadi as well. I mean, that, that's yeah. that's somewhere that doesn't always feature on the tourist circuit. Yeah. But it's we went and, and sort of camped down there once. It was beautiful. Yeah. Other than the country's landscapes, Makia says he admires the spirit and nature of Kenyans. Alice echoes his sentiments. The biggest. Um, Thing that I've been impressed about is wherever I've gone in the country is actually some of the individuals I've met and some of the people in you know really in, in you know quite often um, you know on low incomes and with very you know, little um, prospects but with an amazing sense of ambition and drive and you know a, a wish to achieve and, and to see and to see their country better as well. The family's ventures have not been limited to trips and tours. The family has also acquired a taste for nyamachoma and a variety of other local cuisines. Alice has also taken time off to learn Kiswahili. Yeah, well, I, you know, you, you can't you can't be here and not not try nyamachoma and, and and get into that and get the greasy fingers and you know the the aching belly at the end of the evening when you've sort of stuffed it all down. So I mean, that's a great, you know, it's more of an institution than a meal, isn't it? Mm. But while Rob is into nyamachoma. Alice prefers to sit down with the average Kenyan family and share a meal. It is less important. It's the people that you're eating it with that actually are. And, and, and for us, you know, I mean, I, I think um, um, for us the greatest honour was actually being invited into people's houses and actually sit down and have real food with them. Um, that's the greatest pleasure. The couple which first met in Romania, where Alice's parents worked as missionary doctors, likes to take walks and play polo with their daughters. You know, as a family, we just don't, don't like to sit still, really. We like to get on and do stuff. We've always been uh, keen at horse riding, so we're doing a lot of that here. Um, and uh, including getting into playing polo, which is, uh, uh, you know, we always believe in coming to a new country and trying something new. So we're doing a bit of that now. Um, incredibly badly, I have to say. But, uh, uh, you, know, I play, I, you know, the only sports I play, I play very badly indeed, but sometimes with enthusiasm. Makea also says that their friends and relatives from the UK visit from time to time, especially when winter grips. Um, we've had lots and lots of friends visiting us and some of our other relations have, have come out. Um, uh, it's amazing, particularly this time of year, how, how people suddenly discover they, they, have, <laughs> yeah. they have to come to visit yeah. us. You know, <laughs> when the winter when the winter's been going on for six months at minus Freezing. ten. Exactly, um, exactly. So, uh, yeah, particularly when they find out how many bedrooms we have. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so uh, no, we, lots of people come and see us here. And actually, that's, uh, you, know, you know, life's very busy and sometimes we don't catch up with our friends when we're living in the UK. So for them to come yeah. out here and see us and, you know, you spend proper it's time really with people, nice. that's good. The family's love for nature has also seen it adopt the Karura Forest, which has become Alice's pet project. To boost the security in the forest, Alice convinced the East African Breweries Limited to put up a fence around it at a total cost of 8.5 million shillings. She also persuaded the British Army to train the new forest scouts who are recruited from the local community. Professor Angari Mathai also gave her support for the initiative.
When we came here, we, in the same way that we've just been talking to you about, we wanted to explore. And um, close to where we live was this forest, and, um, and therefore we wanted, to go and we wanted to go and have a look around, and we're told it was very dangerous. And um, so I went, um, I was incredibly lucky because I drove up to the um, Kenya Forest Service headquarters and went in and met an extraordinary lady who's become one of our greatest friends, uh, Charity Manyasa, who is uh, head of the um, Kenya Forest Conservancy, the Nairobi Conservancy. And um, from that moment onwards, she basically sort of never let me go or us go. And, and um, because um, she said, look, we desperately need help to make it safe so that people like you and like Kenyans and the children can come and explore it. And so she kept dragging me down there to show me the different bits, the waterfalls, the caves, the lakes, the everything else. And then um, I said, but I'm sure that there will be issues with the communities. I couldn't possibly be involved in an initiative where anyone would suffer. So she took me to meet the communities. Day after day we sat with them and that's how we got to meet these extraordinary people. And through that, um, um, the, the initiative has grown up and, and I'm so incredibly proud to say that we've got the opening on the 26th, 27th of February, the public opening. And we're already getting, we've had about a thousand children through in the last two months. Makia is definitely proud of his wife who turns 46 this year and with good reason. From the naming of their pet tortoises, Speedy, Gonzalez, Lightning and Flash, to the responses they gave throughout the interview, it's obvious that Makia and his wife have a twisted sense of humor which would keep anyone entertained. Reporting for Capital News, Amambu Indonga.